Hello fellow SREs, welcome back to SRE with Ben. Today we are going to learn about uh, configuring instrumentation and uh, we will be playing around with uh, business transaction automatic and custom deduction rules. I will be going through um, all the components of APM in AppDynamics in detail in this video. Let's first understand what is instrumentation according to AppD. Uh, instrumentation means how your app agent interacts with your application to get the performance data and uh, send it back to the AppDynamics controller. So the first step of instrumentation is installing your app agent, which we have already done in our previous sessions. Your AppD app agent normally uh, comes with default settings, which it uses to identify your uh, application framework and what is the programming pattern and things like that. So if you already have a custom requirement, uh, you can uh, change the default behavior by playing around with uh, instrumentation behavior. For that, there are a few key things that needs to be understood first. The first thing is what is an entry point and what is an ex exit point in your application. So what is an entry point is um, in every type of programming language, right? there are certain frameworks that we use to develop applications. Like your web application in Java, you have Spring, um, you have MVC, Model View Controller Pattern Framework, then you have your uh, Servlet Framework, then you have your Pojo Framework and things like that. Even in .NET, there are certain uh, frameworks like MVC, Plus5, things like that. These are all entry points for your uh, app agent to start tracking the code and your business transaction. So what is an exit point is, whenever there is a call to any uh, resources out, outside your application, uh, like a database, a web service, a REST API, or any call that is going out from your application to any other resource is known as an exit point. For example, you see in this flow map, uh, in this case, the database is an exit point. AppD is showing it as an external call. Now let's go ahead and explore instrumentation configurations. For that, navigate to configurations on the left bar click on instrumentation. Under transaction deduction, you have uh, out of the box auto discovery rules, which work based on your entry and exit point. Let's play around with one auto discovery rule. Based on these entry points, your business transactions are named by AppDynamics when it's displayed in the controller. So as we discussed in our previous section, for any web-based applications, which is using the servlet entry point servlet framework, um, your business transactions are named as per the first two segments of your URL. If you remember, we had changed it to three in our previous sessions. You have various other um, options as well to name your business transactions for web-based servlet model transaction. That is, uh, use the last three segments or use the first three. Or you can change any number of segments you would like here. You can also change the name of the business transactions dynamically by using part of a request. For example, you need a header value or a cookie value. You can name it using a request method type get, post, put, delete, etc. And there are various other options also to name your business transactions. You can use the full URL also to name your business transactions. So in AppD instrumentation for business transaction naming, there are three ways. If the instrumented application is a web application, then your naming convention depends on the URL segments. If the entry point in an application is a web service, then your business transaction is named um, as per like a web service name plus the type of method that you have used. If you have any messaging queue type of an entry point, then your uh, business transaction name is named as per the destination name or the listener class. You can see if it's a web service entry point, then the transaction will be named service name dot operation name. So these are the various naming conventions that AppDynamics instrumentation follows. There are only three like we discussed. So when you navigate to the summary section of the automatic discovery rule, there is something called as a scope here. So what does the scope refer to? Scope is basically on which tires of the application this rule should run. By default, all the tires in an application are included. If you would like to change the scope, you can either add it directly under the rule 
and select which tire. For example, if I want a specific tire, I can select these specific tires and select the tire. This way, once you change the scope, this rule will be implemented for that role as well. In your enterprise architecture, mostly you'll have multiple tires involving your master slave architecture and things like that. If you'd like to differentiate the discovery rules, then you can do it by using scope. To change scope, another way to do it is navigate to scopes under instrumentation. And here you can add whatever scopes you would like to instrument the rules for. Once the scopes are added here, these will reflect in your transaction rules as well, where you can change scope and add the scope. So here you see both my scopes are added. Now I've opened the .NET uh, default discovery rule and I can see these are the various .NET entry points and even here we have uh, monitoring enabled and the way the discovery rule works, the way the transactions will be named for each of these entry points. Again here the same rule applies if it's a web application, two segments of the URL. If it's a web service, it's service name dot operation name. If it's any messaging queue type of a service, then it's a destination name or listeners class name. This is how your business transactions are named. Now, when I see the main transaction deduction tab, I can see on the left side there are uh, icons with A, C, C with a crossbar. So A icon stands for automatic discovery rule. Your C icon stands for custom uh, discovery rule. There are some custom rules which come out of AppD as well. Whenever you see a crossbar with A or C, that means it's an exclude rule. So far, we have been going through include rules. Whenever you would like to exclude something, then you can configure that as well. So here you can see um, they would like to exclude some classes related to the framework servlet class that can be added here. For example, your enterprise application might be using n number of packages to run its code. For example, a log4j uh, library. You would not want to monitor what is happening within the log4j package. You would want to focus more on your application and its performance rather than how your log4j works internally. The same way, even in your application, if you have any classes or methods that uh, need not be tracked because they are not important for your application performance, that can be added here. In any case, you have a custom requirement that is not covered as part of the out-of-box auto-discovery rules, then you can create a custom match rule to uh, deduct your business transactions and name them accordingly. For that, you have to click on the Add button. There are two options here. You can create a custom match rule or an automatic transaction discovery rule. So let's go ahead and create a custom match rule for one of the entry points. For example, your my application is Java and I can select which entry point I would like to configure the custom match rule. I'll select servlet and click on next. Here you can uh, define the name for the rule. If you would like to include transactions or exclude transactions, then you can select the scope here. And what is the priority for this rule? Your rules will be executed as per the priorities that you define here. Zero is the lowest priority. AppD works in a descending order. So if you want your custom rule to be matched, you'll have to give an higher priority here. Then you can go ahead and configure the rule and select for which of the match criteria this rule should apply. For example, if I want for a particular URI, I can give that URI here or I can use regex to match my regex. I have various string op operations here like equals. I want only for slash cart. For every uh, entry point that starts with slash cart, this rule will be applied. Then you have something called a split transaction using request data. Consider a case if suppose you have a URL with the slash cart and there are two methods which operate on this. One is get method and one is the post method. And uh, your requirement is to capture uh, both requests as separate business transactions. That can be achieved by using the split transactions using request data. Here I have various options with which I can split the transactions. Um, if you want to split it based on a request method, you can select this option. There are other uh, options as well. Using custom expression also this can be done. There is a split transaction using payload. This is the same way you can split a transaction based on the request payload that is being passed to your uh, URL. Even here you have various options like XPath expressions, Java XML, JSON, the POJO method call and things like that. Once you're done with the rule configuration, if you would like to see how this rule works on your business transactions on the current data that is coming in, all you have to do is click on live preview and you have to create a business transaction live preview session. For that, select the tire on which you want this rule to apply and click on OK. And then this will start a preview business transaction session 
So as there is load on the application, all the business transaction which matches this rule as per the conditions will get listed here. So this way you can uh, even validate if your rule is working as you want it to work. There are other tools also here. You can use these options to differentiate your um, business transactions. And here all those business transactions will be uh, listed. This way you can validate your rule configurations uh, if your custom rule is working as expected on the go. So this way you can create a custom match rule or an automatic transaction discovery rule. For your transaction discovery rule to take priority, you'd have to give the priority value so that this rule is evaluated first, then the AppDynamics out of the box rules are evaluated. Even here you have various other options that you can set as per your default rules. That's it for today's video. We'll continue with the rest of the instrumentation part in our upcoming session. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.